Okay. <laughs> I was born into a teacup. Lipstick stains protecting me. I was born into the womb of a plum. She was warm and fat, feeds me integrity and sensitivity. There are days when I am all in everything. I am the holy water, the gasoline, the breast milk dripping. Other days when I have to borrow the wheelbarrows, the front loaders, the drilling rigs to pick up sticks my limbs from my bed sheets. They want to swallow me whole. Those days I am the dried up tea leaves in the garbage disposal, the melancholy of Sundays, the thick skin around your fingernails that you chew off on the freeway. There are so many afternoons that I remember my sky being the underbelly of the cracked oak dining table. I'd sink into foreign carpets, hiding from dishes and expectations. My backyard knows too much. She knows secret towels under door frames, boys with grimy hands, they spell surrender on their knuckles. I am growing into my mother's old skin suit. My mouth knows how to say no now. In the mornings, the mirror reads, fight back in toothpaste spit. Don't you know how hard I try, I ask, swallowing little green and little pink. When I was born, I was the color of an Arkansas tornado sky, a bruise of a baby, yellows and greens. They were told to plant me in the garden, to let the sunshine bathe me. I was left out too long. She turned my skin the color of a lunch bag. I hated it at first. Thought the boys would mistake me for the ground. They did. And maybe that was the beginning. Maybe that was why I'd learned to adorn the back of my neck, my left ankle and wrist, and the insides of my fingers with universes of scabs. My childhood bedroom was the color of a ripe olive. My adolescent thoughts were the color of a rotten mango. I made art in there. I made braided bracelets using the colors that made me feel warm, red, orange, yellow, pink. And I made suicide notes using words like, I'm sorry, lonely, too sensitive for this place. I apologize now to that room for have lived in there, and I apologize now to my skin for have mistaken it as a scratch-off card. In the winter of 2015, I felt my loose ends unraveling. One night almost wrapped me up almost took me away and put me in the ground. The night that my little car drove me across state lines, roads unfamiliar, and they held no guilt. Have you ever looked so hard into the dark that you wish it would swallow you up? I wanted to be a part of that wholeness. <laughs> to seep so far into the Missouri pebbles and dirt that they would call me their sister. Lamp posts singing, ditches begging for me, size seven barefoot, heavy on the pedal. There are numbers that you can call for that sort of thing the sort of thing that your mom would weep about, the sort of thing that the priest assigned you four Hail Marys and six Our Fathers for for when you asked for help the first time. I called the number to a voice who rocked me back to Arkansas. He told me about his dog, asked me what I ate for dinner. I lost cell service up in those roads. I sometimes lie in bed whispering thank yous to that voice. How can I put up a wanted ad? for a stranger who helped me turn 22 last year. The next day, I was driven to the ER by a boy who loves me still, where policemen watch you sleep and the nurse says you're too pretty for suicide. No one tells you that when you ask for help, the state first prescribes interrogation and brown scrubs. And then came two big men, I guess that's who you call when a five foot two girl wants to die. In two days, they would take my shoes and hairpins. They'd gift me a strip search and ration shampoo. Friday, they let us outside. Like birds escaping from suburban living rooms, I flew through the grass in my scrubs. I flew so fast into the sun, afraid that the nurses would change their minds. I lied down in the middle of the courtyard, whispering into the dead grass, I love you, I love you. 
I didn't worry about looking unstable. I was already in the home of the unstable. I learned later about the hurt in my paternal grandmother. I learned later about her stays in the hospital just like this one. I know now that my grandmother's depression echoes into me. I wonder what about me made it feel so at home. When she died, I wanted so badly to find myself in her. The shape of my eyes, my lips, the lengths of my fingers, anything. Now I look into photos of her searching for clues to warn me about what it means to hate yourself, about lonely nights and days and weeks and months, about how weeping on your bathroom floor becomes a part of your nighttime routine after apricot face scrub and spearmint mouthwash about feeling so numb that the popcorn walls of my apartment start to speak to me, about the isolation, about the drawn curtains, about the I don't remember the last time I ate, about the I don't remember the last time I showered, about how why doesn't anyone else hear what is yelling in my head, oh right, because it's the inability to share something so ugly and so scary from those who are, from those who are only thing the only things left that provide you light anymore. I didn't want to taint what was good for the people surrounding me that only deserve the best. I wish I could have found the clues to warn me about the enormous hurt that is almost unexplainable and the enormous guilt that finds home in that hurt. Because maybe if I would have spotted it, if I had found those clues, it could have ta I could have taken precaution I could have known that hiding under the dinner table on Sundays was the way anxiety introduced herself to me. I could have known that the numbness I felt at 11 years old was depression finding its place in me. But instead of searching day and night for what could have happened to me in my head, I've realized that despite the illnesses that are at home in me, I have so much love to give. And just recently, I've been able to save some of that love for myself. I don't know when depression or panic will find me next. Maybe tonight in my bed served next to chamomile tea and a sleepy dog. Or maybe this fall when the leaves leave skeletons of trees like a reminder of what I tried to avoid. Or maybe in two years I'll make a call just like the one before. I am so scared of what will come, I am. But at the end of the day, I truly don't know what will. What I do know is that my plants need watering this week, that I have a library book due on Monday, that my dog needs to be fed, and I know that I will wake up tomorrow because I say so. Thank you.